So a few weeks ago, I made a video talking about some of the big changes that were coming to New World. This all came after their big reveal at the Game Awards, where they kind of first really pushed New World out to the public, their big cinematic trailer. They had a bunch of articles that came out. And the main focus uh, around the interviews and stuff was changes that were happening. They talked about how the game in its alpha state was very much so this open world PvP survival game with PvP encounters being a constant threat and players dropping all loot on death. Now naturally, this kind of game attracted a certain type of crowd who enjoys those kinds of games. And the articles mentioned that they were shifting focus away from what the game was in alpha towards PvE with more traditional MMO elements. But there was, I think, amongst the New World community still a lot of uncertainty because there wasn't any official announcement or official post. This was all just coming through various articles talking about the game. Well, last week we finally got that official information from the developer. They sat down to answer some of the community questions about changes that are coming to the game. So I want to touch on the two main things that are happening and are going to be different from New World as it was in the alpha to what it's going to be when it finally comes out in a few months from now. So first off, they said that they noticed that the alpha players uh, wanted more PvE content, and so they're going to be adding more PvE content. They said there'll be more points of interest, they mentioned things like these corrupted breaches, world events where the ground will be opening up and enemies will be pouring out. There's also going to be more curation with a guided experience so that players can learn the game systems and mechanics. They're going to be tuning up the difficulty to provide some more PvE challenge. There will be a, a stronger emphasis on loot acquisition in the game. There's even going to be world bosses for players to tackle. Although no dungeons and raids are going to be in at launch, which is, I think, something a lot of uh, people associate directly with MMOs, they are open to input and adding this stuff going forward, depending on what the community wants. Although I have to say, if it's not there at launch, it's really hard to rein players back in. If you say, hey guys, I know our MMO didn't have dungeons and raids, but you know, we'll be adding them in 2021. I still feel like you could have an open world MMO type experience without dungeons and raids. There just has to be some really compelling content there on the PvE side of things. However, PvE PvE for a lot of the time has been uh, what appears to be more of an afterthought, but they have said specifically the game is now leaning more towards PvE. So what does that mean for the PvP players? A lot of them are pretty unhappy with this change in direction. I mean, you look at a lot of the community, the comments and the like to dislike ratio on this particular developer Q&A, overwhelmingly negative. But then you also check out like the game's various subreddits and responses to the Twitter post. It seems like the PvP community that was looking forward to the type of PvP that New World was offering is unhappy with a lot of these changes. So what are these changes? Well, let's talk about it. Their initial vision for this game was a full open world PvP title where when players died, they would lose everything in their inventory. But they noticed that a lot of high level players were killing low level players constantly and many times exclusively. So you'd have high level people who'd been playing a lot of the New World Alpha exclusively targeting new players as they created their characters and emerged on the beach, creating what they say was a toxic environment for many players. Although they did specifically mention this wasn't all PvP players, but enough to cause a significant issue. What I think is really curious about this is that they come across as genuinely surprised that this was the outcome, which really makes me wonder if they've ever played games like this before. And as someone who's played a lot of open world PvP games, whether it's the MMO variety or things like Rust, this is not abnormal at all. I could have told you if I were sitting in those developer meetings when they said, hey, we're gonna have an open world PvP game with no restrictions on player engagement, I could have told you that this was gonna happen. Regardless of what they thought or knew going into it, they are clearly unhappy. They say that they were looking to build a compelling world full of danger, but they didn't want to allow small groups of players to bully others, especially beginners. And they, they say that they couldn't find a solution to the problem, so the PvP has got a complete overhaul. Instead of the open world, unfiltered, PvP with no restriction on player engagement, they have now added a PvP opt-in toggle where players can choose if they want to engage in open world PvP. Now, if you do opt in, there will be no restriction. All players who are opted into PvP can PvP at any point within the open world, except for particular sanctuaries that exist in the game. But by and large, it's no holds bar makes so that open world PvP exists, but that it's entirely consensual. Now, in order to opt into PvP, you have 
to first be in a faction and you need to at least be level 10. So new players will no longer deal with getting grief from high level players with this new implementation. The criminal system is gone and they've also removed loot drops in general. So even if you opt in for PVP and you die, you're not going to be dropping your inventory. The only thing you're going to lose is your time. The time it takes to get back to your corpse, the time it takes to get back to whatever activity you were doing prior to engaging in PVP. I want to quickly uh, touch on this too because I saw a lot of people minimizing this as a as a deterrent and I gotta wholeheartedly disagree. Just yes, the very fact of me losing 20 or 30 minutes of progression or getting back to what I was trying to do because of a PVP encounter that, that I didn't happen to win, that is enough of a deterrent. Can't speak for everybody, certainly there are lots of people and I understand they want more gravity behind death, they want more incentive, but I gotta be honest, I disagree with the notion that a loss of time is not significant enough because a loss of time is about as significant of a thing that you can lose in your life. So going off on a tangent that I didn't intend. So let's get back to the talk. So 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 yes, now with this PVP opt-in, it sounds like this game might not have a lot of PVP if a lot of people choose not to opt in, but they say that a lot of the PVP is still gonna be in this game and it's all gonna be focused on the wars. Wars are these 50 versus 50 battles for territory and settlement control in this game. It's an open world game, but it's it's got all these separate territories. Within those territories, there are settlements and guilds known as companies will battle for control of those settlements because if you do you get to dictate things like taxes and your company will get benefits for owning a settlement within a territory. So there's going to be a lot of focus in this game on guilds, companies looking to control these territories and that control comes from the outcome of these wars. What will happen is one company will decide to declare war on a territory that they want to take over and then up to 50 combatants for each side will register and a time of war is agreed upon. So wars are going to be taking place at certain times of the day so that players can prepare and be ready for it. Again, it's not the open world, unfiltered, unrestricted PvP that a lot of people enjoyed from the alpha, but it is still a focus on PvP and it's a fair consensual PvP. It's more focused on engaging in combat that isn't unbalanced. You know, there'll certainly be a balance of power between character levels and the type of equipment that you have and coordination, but you really can't ever fully create a level playing field. You still have skill as a discrepancy and I think that's really what they want to focus on as skill being re the real deciding factor in these PvP encounters. So the winning side of a war will of course reap the benefits not only of controlling that territory and the settlement but also just getting resources and experience as a result from that and the wars are going to be taking place on protected battlefields so that it's a fair fight. It's only going to be f the 50 versus 50 who registered for that particular time slot and that battle and since there's such major incentive to controlling a territory and owning a settlement, that is going to drive a lot of the PvP that happens in New World. Now, they mentioned in the blog post that they, again, still want that strong PvP focus, but it's all going to be about a fair, organized fight that are more skill-based and opted in by all participants, and it's not going to revolve around the player killing of underpowered players that they saw prevalent during the alpha. The toggle option, I think, is one that clearly the New World PvP community has not been happy with. There's a few different ways you can handle uh, bypassing griefing in PvP and low-level player killing that don't involve the PvP toggle. I think one of the most obvious ones is to just have separate servers. Now, they address this directly in saying that they don't want to do this because it will split their community as well as the development resources. They say that that's something that they want to avoid. So, okay, I, I can understand that. If you want to avoid that, but you still want to get around high-level players killing low-level players, what about tiered PvP zones? This is something that I personally thought was super successful in like original vanilla WoW. You had these beginner zones where players were getting introduced to the game and leveling up their characters. But then as you progress through the levels and you get to higher tiers of power, there was more and more conflict between the factions and this game will in fact have factions. You could do a similar system where say the beginning zones on the beach are all low level, no PVP. But then as you progress further and further into the important high resource value and later level versions of New World's island, there is eventually full-on PvP conflict. That would be a great way to still have your game have this open-world PvP with consequences to it without worrying about high-level players killing low-level players. Let's just say PvP toggle is the only thing that they want to do. I think PvP toggle can still work and you can still have a huge presence of open-world PvP if you make the incentives to toggle PvP on incredibly high. And I'm not talking about like 15% bonus experience and a little bit more 
gold. I'm talking like 100, 200% bonus experience, a doubling the chance of uh, high level items dropping. Now that sounds severe, but that would push a lot of people towards this initial vision that they had of a game with a world with a sense of danger. Because when you just fully do the PVP toggle, players can choose to completely bypass that environment that you were looking to build. There's so much you can do to really drive the community towards still engaging in that experience. And honestly, the blow will be lessened already with them removing things like the criminal system. And I think that could be a fair balance between. I have no doubt though, the new world is gonna be a pretty massive game. And by the time this thing actually launches, a majority of the people who jump into new world will have had no clue that there was once a different version of the game. All of the people complaining right now on the forums and on Reddit and on the YouTube comments and on social media, they probably make up less than a percent of what the actual player base size and community will be when the game officially launches because the majority of people who will play this game probably still haven't even heard of it. And that might sound ridiculous, but I think that's a fairly safe thing to say. Like, well, there's a lot of people who are gonna jump in this game who will never know that at one point it was full open world dropping loot on death PVP survival game. A lot of this stuff will blow over, but I still see the appeal to a lot of this open world PVP stuff. And I understand the frustration of that portion of the community who up until this point was pretty much the entire community because that's what this game was focused on. I totally get why they're so upset. I totally get why the like to dislike ratio is as massive as it is on this uh, a dev blog video that they released. So a couple things, uh, this game will be entering beta at some point in April and it is set to launch in May as well. Now at the end of the dev blog, they spent I think about a good minute trying to push and talk about some of the benefits of pre-ordering New World. Let me just tell you, don't. I don't think you should pre-order New World. And it's not because I'm not interested and it's not because I won't play it. I guarantee you I'm gonna play this game and I'm hoping that it ends up being a lot of fun and that I play it for a long time. I'm even okay with them changing PVP. It's their game, it's their vision. They can do whatever they want. If it doesn't end up being a game that I ultimately enjoy, whatever. There's a billion games out there to play. Although there aren't a billion open world PVP uh, sandbox survival games, that's admittedly true. There might be a good reason for that. But anyways, um, I, I think you shouldn't pre-order this game, not because I think I'm, I'm saying this game is gonna be awful, it's gonna suck, don't play it. Yes, it's changed a lot. Yes, a lot of people are mad about that. I mean, you shouldn't pre-order games in general, but I'm not here to tell you what to do with your money and I'm not here to tell you what to be interested and excited about, but pre-ordering is generally a bad practice uh, as consumers. Obviously the developers, they want you to throw all your money at the game before it's even done development while they are still drastically shifting focus on what the game even is, of course, everyone wants, hey, you know what? I want you to pre-order my videos. I would love it if everyone were just to give me money ahead of time for the videos that I haven't given you yet. That would be fantastic. I'm just telling you, like, maybe a little bit of fatherly advice or something. Don't throw your money at things that aren't done yet and don't throw your money at things you haven't, you don't even know what it's gonna be. I, I, I don't, I, whatever. Do what you want, you know what? I'm not your dad, okay? I don't care, I don't care how you spend your money. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just trying to give some good advice. I don't know, what do I, what do I, what do I know? <laughs>